Hello, Kevin. Hello. And which game are we gonna go over today? Oh, it's um, his name is Jesse Carthy. Okay, and what is Mr. Carthy rated? His rating is 1618. The game was played at Mechanics Tuesday Night Marathon on March 1st, 2022. Okay. And what color did you have, Kevin? I have black. Welcome, fellow chess players. It's me and Kevin in Berkeley on a nice Tuesday afternoon. And we're sitting on the bench with a lot of shade. Arche what is this called? Archaeology. So, yeah. Okay, so how did this, how did this game go? I ended up getting a draw. Okay. You had black. Yeah. Okay. So Alan Howe would be happy with me. We're getting a draw D4. with black. Okay, this is your usual opening. Okay, the guy doesn't want to play it into a French. Okay, this is the opening you're, you're really booked up on. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. Now so I another like these. And, oh. and see, they're all reading the, they're all reading the database. And they're all playing into. They want to. They want to play into the line that they can study. So. Well, personally, folks, I don't really believe that Bishop D2 is the answer to any of these Nimzo strategies. I really think that uh, maybe I would probably be thinking yeah. about Queen C2 because I don't know this bishop. It is. It is covered in the books, though. I know the books don't mind it, but I think it's funny, a funny line against the uh, ninja. Well, the, the books don't cover it extensively. It's like they have to mention it because it has been played, but I think they agree with you. But some top players have played it. Wow. I think that's okay. why they have the show in the book. Now um, here, you know, Black is often compelled to give up the two bishops, but in return he has good control over this e4 square, which is a very powerful square for potentially for Black's knight. And that's where a lot of the counterplay comes from. So you play this, playing following the other guy. Notice that by playing this move, White kind of is stuck with a little bit of a bad bishop, which may eventually come out to c3. Sometimes, it, like if you play it back, this would be the Rubenstein variation, and then maybe go like this. So I, I, I like to take here, because um, I don't want to have them take back with the knight. Okay, now what we learned in some of our prior lessons is that the bishop and the knight, especially in the middle game, are pretty much equal pieces, each worth three points. And so, Although we don't like to exchange the bishop for the knight, black has in compensation a very nice square on e4, which will compensate him very adequately for the two bishops. Okay, that's a good move. This bishop is gonna, gonna be powerful along this, this particular diagonal, so that's a good move. And now white develops normally and now black has very consistent play of pressure along these light squares, particularly this square. He plays Bishop D3. Now this kind of looks like the game against Bamboo a bit. Yeah, I, I think so. I think he's playing Bishop D3. Um, the standard move. Um. Okay, so far both sides have played well, no mistakes. Cancel. Rook C1. Now this is a logical move. Another move, if I want to keep the two bishops, I might play here and when the knight comes in, I, I retreat the bishop. Or I could retreat the bishop this way. But this is a very natural move. This file often has opening up at some point. These breaks are going to put pressure on the C, C7 pawn. Very good development so far by both sides. Now. This pawn is kind of weak, so you have to watch out for these pawn sacks here. D5 is maybe coming and hitting this thing, so... That, that would be exchanging, like, I would take, right? If you play D5. Well, 
I'm not really sure what you would do. You could take, and then I could either take or take immediately. And then this might have. But I can take twice here, can I not? So. You can take again. If he takes, like then, this I, way. then Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. I can open up the rook. No, if you take with the knight, this is too strong. Right? Oh, yeah. So you have to take with the bishop, probably. Well, this is tough. You go here or no? That's uh, bad. Is this the bad, bad, bad pawns? You got a bad game. So this is a real strategy, and the way to avoid that is to come in here with the knight and preclude some of this uh, monkey business. Yeah. Um, so maybe I, I should have jumped in on move 10 instead of developing the other knight? Personally, you know, I like to develop and jump in early, maybe even before this knight comes out. Yeah. So to avoid these shots. Yeah. I know they are irritating. Um, I've, I've played into having to take there twice. Um, I guess, I don't know if they didn't have the, or you, you take twice and take with the bishop, but then he takes there. Okay. Um, let's see, from 11, g5, d, um, Knight so takes it's, uh, it's white's move here. And black has a bad game. Okay. So who's yeah? You play B three. White white play B three. Okay, so it's white's move here. This is interesting. B three is standard here. Yeah, that's what I just worked on D5. So far, neither side has really made any major mistakes, and the game is probably pretty normal up to this point. So now well, I that's a good here. move. The knight is very powerful, and you don't want to capture the knight, because then I'm either going to capture the pawn or the bishop. So this is yeah, B2. A good, a good move by White. Okay. So, so far, I'm allowing this again, even though I'm not well on it. Well, well, another. Well, let's look at this position. Um, this is kind of a top view, okay? Mm -hmm. So now there's a lot of moves here. You could you could come here, and then if he tries this, you just capture it. Yeah. Okay. If he comes here, you just capture it. Although there's some you know little tricks like this, maybe. so it's not that simple. So this is a move I've played before in this position. The idea if, of the knight. Uh, if he comes here, but they, oh, I, I can capture. Um, either way. Um, either so way. Can I capture with the knight then? Well, I kind of prefer capturing this way, so now I can, if I want, trade queens. Uh -huh. If you capture it this way, um, this is also okay too to do this. Yeah. But, you know, it's good either way, either this way or this way. It's good. C5 doesn't do anything. You know, this is the move that White wants to play here. To try to develop the knight to a better square. And maybe get a fork, fork in on this square. I put pressure on F5. So D5 and, is a major... And, and so if C5, you said you would take with, with the B pawn? Either pawn. But I don't see what's wrong with, you know, trading queens here. And then this for is going to probably force a trade of queens, right? So C5 doesn't have much bite in this position. And also 13 G5. If, if, if you play like if it is G5, then... Well, one of the moves you can play, you could... Probably play here too. Yeah. You know? Close the position and now the two bishops are muffled. Although, you know, he's got some play with this maybe. He's got, got can some I just take there. it? Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, anyway. 
it's unclear what White should do. Maybe he should try to get rid of the knight, try to get F3 in this way, or even this way. I know that some of your pawns have played this way. Yeah, and that was where okay. I hung this pawn, because... Right. Um, but, okay. So, in the game, I played this. And I feel like I've seen this. I know I've seen this in the book, this whole... I've yeah, got. it's probably a book position. Uh, normally, in this line, when I have black, I usually... I don't. I realize I don't have to play C5. Okay, because maybe in some lines I'm allowing the bishop now to operate and open up this, this way. So there are a lot of positions where you, you can refrain from c5 and just continue a5. And then just continue on with your kingside attack, you know? Um, so c5 is not necessary, although it's a move. But because we have two knights against two bishops, we do not want the position to open up too much. Or else the two bishops are going to come out. Uh -huh. So in this position, Caven, you can also entertain a lot of moves. You could even think about coming out to h5. This looks like a move, you know? So it's not clear, you know, what black should do. This is crazy. But not absolutely nuts because it's aggressive. See what I'm saying? It's, yeah. It's got aggression there. I and did the that move later of, on. I the idea move. of uh, developing the uh, scope of the bishop here. So this is kind of over aggressive. Maybe. Okay, so what did you do here, Kate? Okay, c5 is not bad here. So you played h3. Okay, that's interesting. interesting. Here I felt like I was waiting. Uh -huh. um, holding the line, I, I but I like to square for my queen. I just well, let's kind of look at this position a little bit, Kevin. Sometimes in a lot of these positions, you have to decide: Am I going to attack over here? Am I going to attack over here? Or am I going to attack over here? Where is my play? So in this line, I don't think. There's a lot of play on this side of the board, but there appears to be play on this side of the board. Yeah. You know, you can come in here, this is aggressive, you know. Come in here with a try to get get him here, you know. But it appears to me that black should be playing on the king side. Um I could play queen here. This is a move that Caven selected. Or I could even consider, you know, these type of moves where the queen is operating here. And then the rook is maybe coming out or something like that. Or the queen is operating from this vantage point to put pressure on g2. Um, or the queen could even come out here. This is aggressive. You know. But queen e7, I mean, this is not bad at all. So far, both sides have played very accurately. And then you put it back here. No, that's a lemon. I mean, you shouldn't be, you know, effing around like that. This is uh, a total yeah. loss of time. You, you cannot afford this this loss of time in chess. And that's why he is not... Uh, he could have just played that? Yeah, he could have played it immediately. So, I, you know, it's, move, it's really, yeah. really stupid to give the opponent free moves. What did you do, King? What is the purpose of that? I don't quite understand that. You're hoping that maybe this this is going to open up or something, or maybe you're threatening this or something. Okay. I guess so. Yeah, I guess. Well, I, let's, I let's look play at rook f6. Let's look at the position a little bit. Here. So I, I want to be like this. No, no. The problem is he, he wins the pawn. Right? If you come up with rook f6, now rook f6 Good. is a common uh, strategy in this type of position either bringing the rook here or bringing the rook here. But here, you just, you can't do it. So that's one of the reasons I don't like to play c5 too early because it precludes the rook lift now. Yeah. Um, what, what did you play here, Tim? You played here, okay. Yeah. Well, let me see here. You got a lot of moves. You could even consider this move coming 
down the middle. Yes. Yeah. But okay, this seems to be kind of a waiting. Room. To move. He played this, which is probably about as good as my last one. This is awkward. Normally the queen is going here in most queenside openings. So this is kind of a bit unusual to say the least. He could have played queen c2 there and it would have been good. This this looks like more more of a natural developing square in and the queenside opening. And he's pressing on e4. Yeah, you know, just, just to come here or come here. And, but see the way that white is set up, this is why I don't like to play h3, is because now, you know, when I try to kick the knight out, he lands here. So that's why h3 is probably not a good strategy. You called it interesting, maybe I should have called it dubious. Dubious, absolutely dubious. And I think white's game is a bit dubious right now. But taking advantage of that dubiousness is not an easy task because uh, now here's the thing you have to realize Kavin is that if you had omitted c5 mm -hmm. you'd still be in you know pretty good shape in other words you don't need this move to improve your position uh -huh. and you're never afraid of c5 well it, never you know, I was because of that other game no it's just it's just nothing um, you know, C5 does does nothing. Um, doesn't mean, doesn't it threaten? Well, no, if C5 just take. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It just does absolutely, it gives up a pawn. I didn't have my knight set up in the other game, so... It, okay. Um, so now I did this. Okay. Well, all right, folks, we've kind of come to the end of our session. And Kaven went on to draw this game, and Black seems to have played well out of the opening. So long from Berkeley. Thanks for watching. See, they're kind of short, Kaven, you know what I'm saying? Oh,